The solar eclipse, why is it so dangerous and what do you need to know from a medical point of view? Welcome to Talking with Docs, I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. I'm Dr. Brad Weening. And I'm Dr. Raj Finlish, ophthalmologist at Halton Healthcare. So we're just wearing these glasses that you're going to be wearing if you are outside and considering trying to observe the solar eclipse. Absolutely cannot look at the solar eclipse. And if you have tried these glasses on before, you can barely see anything through them. Give us the story on the solar eclipse and why is it so dangerous for the eyes? Thank you, Paul. So next Monday is a full total solar eclipse. First time in a number of years and 99% of the sun will be covered by the moon. This can lead to significant damage to your eye if you look directly at the sun. We call this solar maculopathy or solar retinopathy where there's damage to a particular layer of cells of the retina called the photoreceptors and that is permanent and it's irreversible. So it's really, really important you don't directly look at the sun. The only way to safely look at the solar eclipse is to use these IS standard 12312-2 uh, solar eclipse glasses. Wow. Very tough to say, wow. but they are very Impressive. important. Do not look at it directly. Do not use a telescope, a binoculars, or even your regular sunglasses as they will not filter out the sun properly. You can look through these glasses and through a telescope as long as the telescope has the proper solar filters. Uh, if it's a regular telescope, you got to be careful because they can still concentrate the rays of the sun onto your back to them. You don't want permanent damage. I don't want extra visits next week. I'm scared okay. now, okay. Okay, so, th so there's a lot of information there. Pack. The solar eclipse is basically what happens when the moon gets between the earth and the sun and the moon starts to block the sun from getting to the earth. The problem is a lot of the sun rays can still get past the moon while that's happening, while it's leading to a total eclipse, and those rays are what's damaging. That is correct, because normally we shield our eyes from the sun. You look up at the sun, within a second or less than a millisecond, you turn away because the intensity of light. This time the intensity of light is blocked by the moon, so those rays are getting through, but those rays are still damaging to your eye. And you actually would not necessarily be able to feel it at the time, right? So you're not going to have pain like you normally would when you look at the sun. Not at all. There is no pain. You will start to notice it a few hours to a few days later where you could develop these central areas of visual blur. So you literally could be blinded by the light. You can be blinded by the light. Great song. <laughs> so you know what's interesting about that song? I have a little, a little music history. So a lot of people think that, that was Manfred, the Earth Band, right? But really, it was actually originally written by Bruce Springsteen oh. in 1973, and then stolen, not stolen, but borrowed for... Um, Manfred Mann's Earth Band. Earth Band. They put it as their kind of title track and took it to number one. So it's actually the only song that Bruce Springsteen ever wrote and got to a number one. Did he write Total Eclipse of the Heart too? No, for Bonnie Tyler. No, mm. but I thought that was an interesting piece of kind of music history. Uh, and they changed the lyrics a little bit and in the editing, you know, revved up like a deuce, which mm. referred to the V8 Ford from 1932, came out in their editing as revved up like a, a douche. And they were actually told, hey, you can't, you can't say that, we need to edit that. And those guys said, well, we tried to edit it, but it, it sounds weird, so they left it in and said, hey, if it goes to number one, then we'll just live with it. And, and they did. Man for Pretty man, so. way to go. go, way to steal a good song. And the other factoid about a solar eclipse is, although it's going to happen where you live once every, I don't know, three, four, five hundred years, yep. it happens on Earth about every year and a half. But most of the time, it happens in an uninhabitable place of the Earth. That's why it's not such a big deal. Right. Uh, because this time, it's happening through a very densely populated strip uh, that's going from Mexico, the U.S., Canada. We're all going to have part of our country getting a part of the total eclipse where the sun, block, the Earth, the sun is blocked 99.9% .9 or more by the moon. Okay, so if this does happen to you, what should you do? If you think that you looked at, at the sun without proper glasses and you think you may have suffered an injury because of this, is there anything that you can do in the short term and the long term to deal with that? Other solar. than get a time machine and go back and don't look so at the, the solar sun. eclipse. Yeah. Especially for your kids too, yeah. obviously. Mm -hmm. If you have young children, just keep them away from it at the time. Uh, there's unfortunately nothing you can do. Obviously, trying to get into an eye care practitioner yeah. to get your eyes examined. We can do the proper testing to confirm if there has been damage to the macula. 
There is hope that in three to six months, some of the blind spot can resolve or shrink, but it, it will take time. But there is unfortunately no medical treatment for solar maculopathy. Okay. Because, because it's almost like a laser, right? It becomes almost like a laser on the back of your retina. Exactly. So it's a permanent burn to the photoreceptor. And you can tell me if this is true. There is a German um, ophthalmologist who in the mid-40s was examining people who had solar damage from an eclipse. And they said that that was some of the inspiration for some of the laser technology that we use to actually burn the back of the retina. Probably. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you can't look at it through any lens, like a lens in a camera, telescope, binoculars, like you were saying. You can set up your phone on a tripod to record it. The, the, the image coming off your phone isn't going to do damage to you, so you can watch the image on your phone later. The problem with the, trying to use your phone directly, although the image from your phone won't damage your eyes, you might move the phone and look to see if you're lined up okay, damaging your eyes. And of course, it might damage your phone. The yeah. little CCD chip in your phone might get damaged by the light rays. Uh, but just don't look at it. If you are going to try and look at it, you got to use those type, these types of glasses that we talked about, which if you have a pair and you try it on, you'll see that they block almost everything. It's like a blindfold. That's how much protection you get from one of these. My recommendation would be like, don't even use one of these and look at it personally, yeah. just in case you look away to see if you're seeing what you're trying to see. That would be my recommendation personally from a total safety point of view. Now, before we started filming, we were saying, well, why wouldn't we just make the glasses bigger? Like, because they're so small and you want to really focus. What's the reason behind not making like a bigger wraparound band? Obviously, number one, cost is a big issue. The other thing is, is if they are a bit bigger, they may not filter as much light out. These are quite dark. And the other thing is, is the bigger the lens, the greater the chance you will start to look around because these fit quite tightly onto your face. Do not use them to drive a car, so don't think you can drive out, out in the public <laughs> while the solar no. eclipse is going on, because that's not going to protect you. Yeah. So uh, really, really be careful. Look away. And even if you got them on, they do recommend you periodically take some breaks to give your eyes a bit of a rest. Okay. Uh, yeah, with wearing these glasses, don't try and walk with them. Don't try and do anything with them, because if you're, if you're not looking right at the solar eclipse, you can't see anything out of them. It's like wearing a blindfold. If you're unable to get these solar eclipse glasses, you can actually live stream the uh, total solar eclipse on the NASA website. And I totally recommend that best way to view the entire solar eclipse safely. For the other 7 billion people not in the path of totality. There you go. Last thing, don't get them off of Amazon or eBay. Make sure you get them from a reputable dealer. Remember, IS standard 12312-2. Maybe we'll write that down for them because I can't remember it every time you say it. Too. There you go. Now you know. We felt it was important to get this information out as it's a very exciting event for lots of people, but it is potentially dangerous, dangerous so be careful. And if you like this video, please like it. Subscribe to our channel. Share it with someone that's thinking about watching the eclipse. And share your eclipse stories with us in the comments. And thanks, Dr. Brinlish, for joining us this morning. My pleasure. Remember be safe. You are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time.